Ready? Okay. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Josh from Kingdom Auto and today I have my little helper Jaden here with me as well. Say hi buddy. Hi. And today we are going to be doing, to the best of our ability, an unbiased test comparing Amsoil engine flush and Seafoam engine flush as well. So let's get to it. Oh, Jaden. Jaden. Are you coming? Okay. Okay. So this is the product from Amsoil that I'll be using. It's called Amsoil Engine and Transmission Flush. Claims to clean and prepare engines and transmissions for new oil. Some of the other things that it claims to do is loosen sticky valves and rings, clean clutches, uh, quieter lifter noise, safely clean seals, and reduce oil consumption. And as for the seafoam treatment, it's supposed to be cleaning injectors, cleaning carb jets, stabilizing fuels, uh, controlling moisture in fuels, also quieting noisy lifters, cleaning deposits, adding lubricity to fuel, lubricate upper cylinders. Daddy, why do they have bad things on them? One thing worth noting here is that these cleaners have a number of different applications. So some of the things that I've listed off the bottles are a little bit irrelevant for today's test. But what we're basically going to seek to accomplish is how well they clean out the inside of the engine and maybe if there's a little bit of an improvement in fuel economy or oil consumption or even little things like the idle noise and also how clean the inside of the engine looks after we're done the As test. I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the purpose of this test is to try to remain as fair and as unbiased as I possibly can. Now, I know that's tricky because of the fact that I'm testing two products with just one engine, but we're gonna do our best and kind of make do with what we've got. So really the biggest area for bias here it's, is whichever product happens to be tested second after the first one, because you could really argue that the first product will, if it doesn't perform quite as well as the second, the first product could have loosened up a bunch of the gunk and sludge that's in the engine, and then the second one could have gotten rid of it entirely. So this is why I've decided to test the Seafoam second and the Amsoil first. There are a lot of videos available, even around YouTube right now, that show people who have independently tested Seafoam and experienced some really positive results, whether it be removing the engine sludge and having a much cleaner looking engine after the test was done, or just having a quieter running engine once the test was completed as well. There's a really popular channel on YouTube called Project Farm, and he did a test of Seafoam and had some really good results as well, especially with how much quieter and smoother the engine was running after Seafoam was tested. So based on what I've been able to find, the Seafoam seems to have already indicated good results. Now I haven't found too many tests on the Amsoil product at this point. So I've decided I'm gonna do the Amsoil first, see what kind of results we get from that, and then go over to the Seafoam because we kind of already know that that is more of a proven product. So I'm hoping that's a fair way of doing things, but let's just get to it and see what kind of results we can come up with. The directions here are to add the entire bottle to the engine oil port, idle engine for 10 to 15 minutes, and then immediately drain the oil. Replace the oil and refill with new oil. What I think might make sense is for me to change the oil, idle the car for 10 minutes, drain a little bit of that oil to take a bit of a sample to see how dirty the oil is after 10 minutes of idling, then add the AMS oil, idle for another 10 to 15 minutes and check it again to see if there's a difference between just idling the car with no product in it for 10 to 15 minutes and then idling the car with a detergent in it. So all that said, let's get to it. All right, time to go ahead and add the Amsoil product. It says to add the entire bottle into the engine here, which we're gonna do. And now just start and run for 10 minutes. The Amsoil test is now finished. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the valve cover again so we can compare the before and after. Also, I've taken a sample of the oil drained after the AMS oil test was finished, so we can compare that as well. And then we'll be moving on to the seafoam test.
Okay, with the AMS oil test done, time to jack up the car, drain the oil, change it, and then get started with the seafoam. Moving right into the test of the seafoam product. This product is a little bit different in the fact that they actually want me to drive around for a few hundred kilometers before changing the oil and draining everything out. And in this case, they want me to add, based on the directions and based on the amount of oil that this car takes, about a quarter of the bottle to the oil and then drive around. So we're gonna add that and see how it goes. The seafoam test is now complete. I've done a few hundred kilometers on the road and it's time to pull everything apart again and see what we see. So this is a quick shot of what the valve cover looks like right now. This is before any of the testing has been done. This car has been driven for over 370,000 kilometers, has always had its oil changes done on time, and has mainly used synthetic oil for all of its life. So you can see the wear on the cams, you can see all of the sludge buildup. Overall looking pretty gummed up on the inside of that engine there. All right, let's bring everybody in for a closer look here. So this is the after of the AMSOIL test. Now I don't have the before on camera. I haven't looked at it yet. So to me, it looks relatively the same. Still quite a bit of engine sludge. Not too big of a noticeable difference in my eyes. I can tell you that I definitely smell the AMSOIL product there quite a strong smell coming from the top of the engine here after doing that test. And here is the valve cover. Again, in my eyes, looking pretty much the same. I don't know how much of this is really gonna be able to be removed by a product, but maybe we'll see different results with the seafoam. All right, we're back after removing the valve cover. And I'm hoping that you guys can see this. I know that my shadow might be in the way a little bit at times, but in my opinion, it does seem to look a little cleaner than what it did before. There's a few spots where it seems as if some of the sludge has been removed. And there's quite a few places where it seems like it was at least loosened as well. Now again, we'll let the camera prove these results, but in my opinion, this looks to be a little bit cleaner than what it was before. 
there's loose sludge. I'm removing this with my my thumb very easily. Now, I know I didn't test that before, but this is just something that I've noticed right now. All of this is coming off really easily. So, leads me to believe I'm wondering if if I ran these tests a couple more times, maybe it would remove more. Okay, one last thing to compare before we get to my final thoughts, and I honestly don't think that this is going to provide any evidence whatsoever for one product or another, but I figured at the beginning of the test, maybe I should just try it out and we'll see what happens, but I don't think it's going to do anything. So here's the control right here, which is just plain brand new oil. This is the what the oil looks like after running the engine for 10 minutes. This is what the oil looked like after running the AMS oil test. And this is what the oil looked like after the seafoam test was finished. And if you're watching this and going, these three look exactly the same, it's not just on camera. They look exactly the same to me as well. A little bit of a fail on my part in this regard, but I figured I'd give it a shot and better to have and not need than to need and not have. Okay, and that about sums it up. So we've tested two different products which claim to do basically the same things. As I stated in the beginning of the video, there was no perfect way for me to do this test having just one car but I definitely did do the best with what I had to work with, so I hope you guys enjoyed. In conclusion, based on what I have been able to observe, I did notice that the seafoam seemed to have removed more of the engine sludge underneath the valve cover as compared to the Amsoil product. However, in my mind, this kind of does make sense a little bit. One reason could have very well been what I had talked about at the beginning of the video, where because we tested the AMS oil first, it may very well have loosened things up and then the seafoam kind of came in and took care of maybe some of what the AMS oil had already began to clean. And the other reason why I'm thinking the seafoam might have done a better job is because of the fact that you're actually driving around with the seafoam product in the engine. With the AMS oil, you just run it for 10 to 15 minutes, shut it off, drain it, and you're done. With the seafoam, you actually drive around. So it makes sense. If there's a product in the engine a little bit longer, it probably has a longer time to do it. Its work. I will note, however, in my opinion, after performing both tests, it does seem as if the engine is running a little bit quieter now. I don't think I'm hearing the valves tick quite as loud as what they were before, although this definitely could be just me wanting the products to work. However, one thing that I can report that is a definite improvement is the smoothness of the engine idle. There's definitely no question that when the engine is up to operating temperature, it definitely runs and idles a little bit smoother than what it did before. And the only reason I know that is just because I've been driving this car for quite a while and I can tell now that it's definitely smoother than what it was before. Apart from that, we can pretty much just compare with the footage that we have of the valve cover and the valve train before and after and just see the difference based on the images that we have there. If I had to pick a product that I would have said came out on top, it would have been the seafoam. I really think that due to the fact that you're driving around with this product in the engine for a few hundred miles or kilometers is what makes the difference. On top of that, you don't have to use the whole bottle as well. I've got more than half a bottle left that I could use on other engines or other applications, which is great. The AMS oil is completely empty because they call for the entire bottle to be used. And in my opinion, I noticed more of a difference with the seafoam. So I hope everybody enjoyed this test. If you have any comments or recommendations as to how I could have improved this test, please let me know. I'd be happy to at some point repeat it down the road and maybe we'll see some different results. But in any case, thank you so much for watching and until next time, God bless.